Ooh, I don't think I can see my shadow there. Eh, no, all I see is Muhammad Ali ready to go. I, I don't think the Groundhog saw the shadow. Early spring, let's go! Anyway, what is happening? What's going on? We have the Senior Bowl going on. And I wanted to get a discussion going, get some conversation in the mix. Talk about how these prospects, and especially some of these guys who are really rising up at the boards, how they're going to fit for teams, some teams to keep a close eye out on. So we're going to get a discussion going and talk about these Senior Bowl prospects and highlighting a lot of them. We're going to go do a very normal two-round mock draft. There will still be a lot of guys you normally hear, but we will definitely be talking about some of these Senior Bowl guys and how they fit into this draft. Also, the Draft Network, they dropped their beta format, and I wanted to give this a try and see how it is. So I wanted to hop on here on the simulator. I love to do templates, and I'll definitely do a three or four rounder on Monday next week following the Senior Bowl for a full, more full mock draft. But let's go ahead and give this a go. I feel like let's give it a try, see how it is. Let's start the draft up for the Chicago Bears. Now we could see how the trade logic here works. And uh, let's do that, man. Let's let's go ahead and hit the phone call button. Okay, they even got a little phone over there. I like that. Okay, that's pretty cool, and baby. I like it. Anyway, let's take a look and see. Who do we want to trade this time? Who's coming up for Bryce Young? Hey, Bryce Young is going to be number one in my mock drafts every single time. I think I don't think he, anybody's gone number one overall than Bryce Young in my mock drafts the entire draft season. I know I'm pretty uh, unoriginal. Overall, though, here we're going to get the Chicago Bears. And let's do the Houston Texans. Let's say they just move up from number two overall, trying to go and snag their quarterback of the future. And I could see that happening. But Demeco Ryans might also want to say, you know what? We'll just stick at two and take Will Anderson because the edge rushing talent and Jalen Carter, right? They could build in the trenches. I could see that happening with that Demeco Ryans hire more and more. It actually will be really interesting. But in this case scenario, let's go ahead and move up. I think the Bears are going to definitely be shopping at the pick. And we will be doing that as such here with the Houston Texans. Moving up from that number two overall pick to the number one overall pick. It's going to cost a pretty penny. I'll just tell you that right now. We're going to say it'll cost a second rounder. And then also we're going to throw in a fourth rounder to move up to that number one overall pick. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey. But at the end of the day, it's going to be something to get the job done. We're going to have to hold on. They're evaluating it. Stay on the line. That's right. We're the other team. We got our own trade offer. Should we accept our own trade offer? Oh, okay. I'm the Chicago Bears now. Okay, we're going to accept it. And we make the deal happen. So the Houston Texans move up here to number one overall. And there's your little trade symbols. And we are going to come up here for Bryce Young, that number one overall pick. Again, it's kind of interesting the way this is all laid out, but you have to go back up here to see which team is on the clock. But now the Bears are on the clock, and this is a very interesting discussion, right? But at the end of the day, you're getting a great prospect either which way, whether it's Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. I'm going to go and opt for the unique prospect in Jalen and Carter. Very, very good both players, but I think Jalen Carter is just the best maybe player in the draft other than Bryce Young. Like These two guys are the top two talents in this draft. And Will Anderson, yeah, he's still really freaking good. But, you know, you got to say this right now with Will Anderson was not as good of a season as you would have hoped from the young man. But at the end of the day, you know he's going to be an unbelievable pass rusher. So I'm going to go ahead and take him. Pretty self-explanatory for the first three picks. I think that's pretty much unanimous on just depending on which teams are going to be there and how it all shakes up. Those are going to be your three off the board with those first one through three picks. Now we get to the Colts where this is starts to get more into discussion, of course, on, uh, you know, after that. But I still think quarterback, obviously, for the Indianapolis Colts. Will it be Will Levis? Will it be CJ Stroud? I like Anthony Richardson. So for me personally, if I'm doing a what I would do mock draft, I, I'm going to shake it up here and I'm going to go Anthony Richardson because I think he is the best quarterback, the, the second best quarterback in this draft. And you're probably saying to yourself, what? You went over him with CJ Stroud? Yeah, you crazy. G -Sling. I don't care, man. I like it. I like it. I think Anthony Richardson, and I'm going to stick by this. He's the guy that can come in here and I believe he can play early on in the NFL. I, I'm not this person that says he has to sit forever or anything like that. I think he's a dude that can come in and be the guy uh, right away, utilize his skills in the run game. And the Indianapolis Colts offense line, while I do think it will be better, you still need a guy who can utilize those legs and run, run, run. And I just, I feel like his upside, Anthony Richardson with the right development, can be a be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So I take chances, man. That's what I like to do. I'm a risk taker. On to the Seahawks here at number five overall. And this is a team that I think they should do something like what the Philadelphia Eagles have done. Move draft capital into the future because, yeah, I do think they should bring back Geno Smith on like a one-year deal or a franchise tag, whatever. 
but they do need more draft capital for 2024. So that way, just in case Geno Smith doesn't have a Jalen Hurts or just isn't the guy, whatever, if there is some variability, you have that draft capital to be able to go after a quarterback next year. They could go after a quarterback here, and I wouldn't hate it by any means. I just think Geno Smith has definitely earned that ability, and you can build more talent around Geno Smith and help this team because they still have some more team building to do. And I think making a trade here makes a ton of sense. So we're going to go ahead and make a deal happen. And I think a team, a very obvious team, would be either the Raiders or the Panthers. We'll go ahead and get it done. We'll go with the Panthers this time. And, you know, we'll shake it up always. And in terms of what it's going to cost, we're going to look into the future and say a first rounder next year. So let's go ahead and uh, accept this offer for the Carolina Panthers. And they move up from that number nine overall pick to the Seahawks at number nine. And Frank Reich was saying, hey, I want stability at quarterback. I want somebody who can come in there and going to be more of a long-term answer. And this Carolina Panthers organization, I think they're done with the stopgap quarterbacks trading. Maybe Derek Carr ends up, this is the landing spot for him. I could definitely see that being a very good possibility. Maybe he gets just straight up cut and then they sign him in free agency. I could see that happening. But in this case scenario, we're going to come up here for a guy who I do think can provide that stability in CJ Stroud from Ohio State. You know, great pocket passer, showed he got some good mobility. I mean, you knew he had some, it's just like you wanted to see it more. One of the top defenses, of course, in Georgia. So that was a big showing for him and proving his draft stock. I'm still higher on Anthony Richardson. That's just my opinion. So, hey, I go with my gut on this. I ain't perfect. You probably hit me up and that's cool. On to the Detroit Lions here, number six overall, the Lions. It's time to bring the roar back to the dome, man. They have this season and now it's time to really just continue to solidify this defense right any more defensive line talent corner or linebacker right those are your big three needs and obviously they'll address at least one of those positions in free agency john kaminsky more than likely coming back to help them out there too but for me personally i think you go ahead and take a corner because i think the value especially with the good cornerback class they need someone on the outside i think that's their biggest need going into this offseason i mean they've been okay but it's like they need a number one guy and i think to me that's joey porter jr get him on the outside to be that true number one corner. And then it makes everyone else's job, like Jerry Jacobs or Jeffrey Okuda, makes their job easier going forward. Uh, let's go on to the Raiders, number seven overall. And it is another situation where we don't know what we don't know just yet, but for the time being, they need quarterback, right? It's pretty obvious they gotta get a quarterback. And Will Levis has those upside tools. You could say, well, Josh McDaniels probably gonna maybe want for more of a guy like a CJ Stroud, someone maybe a better decision maker. But at the end of the day, I do think Will Levis, a lot of tools, and, and you need someone there in that quarterback room. And he definitely could be. He's got the intangibles for sure, right? The banana peeling, oatmeal eating guy, right? Get something in there. You need some help. And you get Will Levis for the Raiders as your future quarterback. On to the Atlanta Falcons at number eight overall. And this is a situation where they could look at quarterback too, depending on who's available. Maybe they hit the free agency market too and maybe pick up a Jimmy G. I could see that being a possibility for them. Watch out. But what I'm going to do here is go pretty obvious. I think you need more edge talent. Now, this is where it won't be so obvious because I just did my whole evaluations. Uh, well, I'm not completely done on the defensive line just yet, but I've been through a lot of them. And I'm higher on an edge rusher, Nolan Smith. I am a huge fan of Nolan Smith. And you're probably going, oh, oh, what? What did he just do, G Sling? You took Nolan Smith. You have Tyree Wilson. You've got Miles Murphy there. Yeah, both studs. Okay, I think they're both really, really good. And we'll talk about them. But Nolan Smith, to me, this guy is more physical and plays more powerful and unafraid than Miles Murphy or Tyree Wilson. You know, the thing about it is sometimes you, you see these cutback blocks from tight ends or, you know, offensive linemen coming across the line. The thing about it is a lot of these defense linemen, they just use their shoulder, right? It's kind of the lazy thing to do. They don't want to get hit. Nolan Smith is the exact opposite. He's like, no, man, boom, I'm bringing the force to you. And that's, you know, something like you want to see, in my opinion, like some of these good offensive linemen, they bring the force to you. It's what we're talking about with John Michael Schmitz later on and these one-on-ones. I bring the force to you. I bring that force, right? I have the force. I have the power. I have the power. Anyway, Nolan Smith, I am a huge fan of him. I mean, his twitchiness is unbelievable. Like, you see this guy move laterally, it's different. And he can continue to build up on his frame. I think he's a perfect scheme fit for the Atlanta Falcons. Gets more edge rushing talent. This guy's going to be able to get after the quarterback right away. And the locker room leadership, he's not an older prospect. He's 22, just turned 22 years old. 
he's a beast, man. Maybe Miles Murphy has more upside. That's true. But I just it wasn't super impressed with his uh, power profile. I know people talk about his power profile. The dude cannot really win with a bull rush that much. Anyway, the clock's ticking here for the Seahawks. I better get moving on. Uh, but with the Seahawks here, I'm going to take an edge rusher at this point. And I am going to take someone who can help them in the run defense. And I'm going to go after Tyree Wilson here. He's got that immense power, those long hands, can play at that five tech. And he just fits their defensive front and what they want to do quite a bit. And while I'm a little higher on Miles Murphy, I do think Tyree Wilson, uh, you know, is still a good value at this point. I think he's a top 15 player and get yourself someone on that defensive line. Uh, Eagles here at number 10 overall. And the Eagles, I, you know, I do... I'd say at this point, you probably look at corner. I think corner is probably their biggest area of need. Miles Murphy is really, really interesting, but I'm still not quite there because I do think cornerback is really, really good in this class. And I'm going to go and take a corner and I'm going to go Christian Gonzalez. I think he's just unbelievable. And I think that you need to get some more help on the outside with James Bradbury. I don't know if they're going to be able to pay him. So let's go ahead and get Christian Gonzalez here. On to the Tennessee Titans though here, pick number 11. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I think you got to go ahead Get some offensive line help here. And even though Miles Murphy would be an interesting little pick here, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't mind going Miles Murphy. It's an option to replace Bud Dupree. But I think offensive line makes the most sense. They just desperately need help. I mean, it's like the worst offensive line in football. Now, what I will say is there's a lot of good offensive linemen. I think any one of these five guys could easily be in the mix. But to me, I'm going to go ahead and take the guy who I have as my number one offensive lineman in this class. He's maybe not the safest prospect, but I think he's the dude with the most upside. It's Broderick Jones. I think he fits their scheme perfectly to a T has that tremendous run blocking prowess if he can kind of just work on his overall footwork and his overall pass sets like this dude could be unbelievable and also his engagements he struggles sometimes with overalls his grip strength but those are things that like all you can work out by like the explosiveness the power the frame like the dude it could be the best left tackle in football in a couple of years and i think he could easily be that guy like he's just got so much upside to his game i'm a huge fan of broderick jones on to the uh, Houston Texans at number 12 overall. I think offensive line. Ooh, offensive line. Peter Skaronsky would be a fun one. You put him in left guard, maybe Kenyon Green over at right guard. Ooh, I like that a lot. Oh, it's a tough one. But there's some good players on the board. Miles Murphy. This is where I think you got to go ahead and take Miles Murphy. If he's, if he's on the board, they could desperately use edge talent or defensive line help in general. So I'm going to go ahead and take Miles Murphy out of Clemson. I talked about it earlier. Like, I think that for me personally, he's my number three edge guy. And I do have him listed over Tyree Wilson. I just felt like the fit there with Seattle might be a little bit better. They need a run-stopping guy. Miles Murphy, I just don't know if he's quite that guy just yet. Miles Murphy, get more power in his hands. Want to see him utilize that bull rush a little bit more. That is, you know, just something rather than just always be speed, speed, speed. That's like what he is. Go speed racer. Go speed race. That's all he does. It's like, yo, I love to see you go and explode off the edge and use that rip to get to the quarterback, which he does to at a high success. But I want to see you control, engage, utilize that uh, power and inside counter a little bit more than what you have been. On to the New York Jets here at number 13 overall. I think they need offensive line help. And I am going to be taking the best offensive lineman available at this point, which there's some good ones, man. Actually, for me, Antoine Harrison, my, I think he's got higher upside than Peter Skaronsky, but I think Skaronsky gives you versatility, whether you're a guard, whether you're a center, you know, Connor McGovern, whatever, tackle. They just need offensive line help. I think Peter Skaronsky is really, really good. So I'm going to go that route here for the Jets at 13 overall. On to the New England Patriots, number 14 overall. Is this when we take Dewan Jones? Oh, man, uh, it's a tough one. Dewan Jones, he's really talented, man. He really could go in this range. I'm still higher on Antoine Harrison, Paris Johnson, Dewan Jones. So that conversation's getting closer and closer. I think Paris Johnson's a really, really solid offense alignment. And I think that's what New England needs. They need someone who can come in day one and give you that base floor. Like, I think he's a top 15 tackle in the NFL, and the New England Patriots desperately need some more help. I mean, they were so penalized. They just were terrible on the tackle position. Really, Even Trent Brown was not very, real. I mean, he was up and down, a little shaky. And then Isaiah Wynn, Connor McGovern, or McDermott, they just need help on tackle. Uh, let's go on to the Green Bay Packers, number 15 overall. And I think this is something where we look at either maybe like a tight end. I mean, this is where Michael Mayer could come off the board, no doubt about it. Uh, they could look at a receiver for sure. Man, I think they're, you know, getting a little bit of emergency. And this is a team, too, could be at a bit of a small rebuild. I am going to go after Brian, or, uh, Brian Branch, though. I think Branch fits this team perfectly to a T. He's a top 15 player in this draft class. 
maybe even top 10. Like he could, you know, you can make the argument just because he's a safety that he won't go top 10, but he's a top 10 talent in this draft class. Like I'd put him in this mold behind Will Anderson, Jalen Carter. He's in the uh, uh, Bijan Robinson. Like he's that good. He's right there. I think he's like neck and neck with Bijan Robinson as just a pure, unbelievable like talent in this draft class. It's just because safety, running back value, you have to kind of complement that in there. But Brian Branch is just, he's a blue chip player. Uh, on to the Washington Commanders here, now at number 16 overall. I think the Commanders, for me personally, I, I like going after some offensive line help because I do think that this offensive line it needs to reworking on the interior. Now, whether or not you want to draft the tackle and move one of these guys to the inside, unfortunately, though, I think Dewan Jones is a right tackle, right, or a left tackle. Antoine Harrison, to me, is a tackle. I'm going to go after a guy who, I mean, no consolation prize here. I think Osiris Torrance. Perfect fit for them on that interior. Plug him right into that right guard position. You can even work him in left guard if you wanted to. You can figure things out um, uh, with what's his name. Not Voorhees, the, uh, the veteran. I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now. I don't know why. But anyway, Osiris Torrance coming right in there. And Andrew Norwell, right? Andrew Norwell. I was like, wait, I know, I know this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take Osiris Torrance at number 16. Get some more offensive line help. Could even look at a center, who knows, or someone with versatility who could play center for them. On to the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 17 overall. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, offensive line, corner, there's a lot of options here. I love this offensive line class, and I, look, I think you need some more offensive line help. They need depth, if nothing else. I know they had all five players that were able to play every single uh, down this season, which is a rarity. You don't see that happen. But at the end of the day, I do think you need an upgrade, whether it's Chuck's or whether it's Dan Moore, go ahead and bring someone in there. And I'm going to bring in Antoine Harrison. I'm still, I think he's going to be an all pro in the NFL. I really do. Antoine Harrison is a beast. And you get him to be your left tackle or right tackle of the future. Ultimately, I see him as a left tackle. Uh, Detroit Lions at number 18 overall here. Osiris Dorn, someone actually, if he was on the board for them, I would 100% take that. But Let's take a look at the board real quick. And Bijan Robinson. Oh, Brian Brzee's available. Heck yeah. I am slamming that in for the Detroit Lions. Actually, that's my favorite draft for them. Joey Porter and Brian Brzee. So you get some interior defensive line help. And Joey Porter at corner. So you get your number one corner and a stud defensive tackle. That to me is the ideal, perfect scenario for the Detroit Lions. I mean, linebackers definitely need to, but I think positional value, maybe looking at that in the second round would be really good for the Detroit Lions slash free agency. And Brian Brzee is a guy who I'm just in love with, dude. I think he is an unbelievable talent. If he can work on some of those leverage ability, getting sometimes a little bit too high, which is forcing him to, you know, his disengagement combined with his length. He's not the longest guy, which is another reason why he struggles sometimes to get off blocks. But you talk about a speed, size, explosiveness, combination he's got it and I think he's going to be an absolute beast when he gets fully healthy and that's really the only question mark for me is just getting healthy work on disengaging more consistently Buccaneers number 19 overall I am going to be looking at either a linebacker here or edge rushing talent I'm going to lean towards getting some more edge rush they need something else off the edge and in terms of who do I like I think adding a power element would be nice, but uh, I think you got your power element. So maybe adding a speed element actually too would be nice. I mean, something. They just need some help off the edge in terms of who do I like for them. Who would, BJ Ojolari would be a really good option for them. Uh, I'm, I'm a little higher on some of these other guys, but I do think BJ Ojolari is really, really talented. And he's right in this neck of the woods. So I am going to go that route here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Take BJ Ojolari, edge rusher, out of LSU. He's a pass rushing nightmare. And uh, yeah, he's going to be some real big time help for them. Seattle, number 20 overall. Uh, we went after a interior defensive line slash edge rushing player with Tyree Wilson. Gives you that versatility. But I think he'll be able to take off some pressure uh, with Daryl Taylor, uh, Boye Mafe, and Achinino Wosu there as your edge rushers. He comes more on the interior alignment. Uh, Seattle here, number 20 overall. I, I think at this point, you're looking at, uh, let me, let's take a look at the board, but you're probably looking at either a linebacker you're looking at, I mean, you could just say best player available in a receiver. There's some good, I mean, obviously all the receivers are still off the board, which is, you know, indication. I do think this receiving class, there's some, definitely some variability to it. But for me personally, I love this fit. I know their cornerback room is not bad, especially with Tariq Woolen stepping up, but Kelly Ringo, Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant, that to me is just, I, 
I love that fit. You know, sometimes there's just perfect fits in the draft. I think Kelly Ringo is that perfect fit for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, for number 22, at this pick for the Los Angeles Chargers, I think you got to go ahead and you look at this board and you say to yourself, look, Bijan Robinson, he's an unbelievable talent. You get him in there, rocking with Austin Eckler as a one-two punch. They've been looking for a guy to be able to take a little bit of pressure off the, you know, Bijan Robinson in the ground game. I mean, not Bijan Robinson, off of Austin Eckler. Bijan's the guy. Like he, they finally find that dude in Bijan Robinson. Not to mention he's a dynamic playmaker to get Justin Herbert some more help. Not that he, you know, I mean, they, you know, we're, I think they'll get a speed threat in free agency. That's just my view because I think it'll be a big priority for them. They won't want to want that the chance. So I see them picking somebody up in free agency that has some speed. So to get that compliment, I think you go ahead and take Bijan here at number twenty-two overall. It's a great value. Who uh, you know, top five player in the draft. On to the Baltimore Ravens here, number 23 overall. This is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, yeah, granted, there's great corners. That's true. You know what? Receiver is a huge need for them. But, man, their corners on the board. You still have Devin Witherspoon available. What's going on here? Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. I, I, can't, I can't pass on Witherspoon. I just can't. He's too good not to take. Baltimore, they desperately need another corner because Marcus Peters probably will not be back. So I'm going to, I'll be back. But he probably will not be back. So go and get Derrick Withers. We had a 23 overall. What a value. Get yourself a stud. Perfect fit too. Minnesota, number 24 overall. Ooh, I probably would have gone that route. Even though you guys still got Cam Smith. Their cornerback room, Andrew Booth. You got to remember about Andrew Booth. Maybe they need more of a slot guy. So maybe you look at that later, day two. Uh, for me, at this point, I, I'm looking at the receiver position. I know, you know, it's not bad. You got Justin Jefferson, of course. You don't need a first-round pick at receiver. It's not a big need, actually, for them. So, I don't know. Maybe we can try to dangle some trade bait for somebody here. Actually, I think that's a great idea. Let's try to dangle because they don't have a second-round pick. So, maybe they can pick up a little bit of extra draft capital. Make a move here with somebody who might be interested. Let's let's see what we can work out a deal, right? Because I think they need interior defensive tackle more than another. I mean, like I said, we, they could use another receiver. And I do think adding a number two guy in on like a day two as a day two pick would be really good for them. But you got Justin Jefferson. He's your number one. I don't think it's a you know thing that they have to get in, you know, that. They could be a team that jumps up for Anthony Richardson too if he falls. Because like I said, I'm just high on Anthony Richardson. But I could see that being a really good possibility. In terms of which team do I think could be really interesting. Interesting. This this does get really like interesting. Like which team would be wanting to come up? But there's a team that I think could make a ton of sense to come up here and get some help in their offense. Right? We already got a little bit of help in their offense. I'm gonna add some more help with their offense. I'm coming up with the New England Patriots. And oh, yeah. yeah, you heard me right. I'm coming up with the New England Patriots. Hold on. Let's see. What is this right here? Which pick is this? That's into the oh, here we go. I was like, where are their picks? I'm like, they got more picks than that. So they've got a lot of round four picks. Okay, so I want to package first off a second rounder. We're going to package a fourth rounder and a third rounder. So a third and a fourth round pick to come up. And I think, would that be right trade value? You're moving up from 24 to 47. Uh, I'm trying to think, what would be the right value? We'll just do that. Okay, we'll, we'll do a third and a fourth round pick. Uh, with their second round pick to move up to number 24 overall with the Minnesota Vikings, who now going to get uh, some extra draft capital in those mid rounds. Remember, they just don't have a ton of picks. New England has more picks and they need offense help really, really bad. And with Bill O'Brien coming in, hopefully that'll stabilize their offense. But I am coming up for a guy who can really help them out in the receiving room. And to me, it does get, uh, it's a question on whether or not uh, Jacoby Myers is re-signed because if Jacoby Myers gets re-signed, then I would not go J Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, I would go Quentin Johnson. And that's where I'm going to go because of that crazy upside. Jackson Smith and Jigba, though, would be nice. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Jacoby Myers can't play on the outside. You know what? I, I'm going to take my guy. Okay, look. Johnson, it, it really does depend on how you view things, but I am really, really high on Jackson Smith the Jigba. And I'm, I like Quinn Johnson too. I think he can be a number one. And, and maybe that fits their scheme a little bit. You know, maybe like I said, what they need is someone who can win on the outside, be more of a vertical threat in their offense. So, but you got Tyquan Thornton. Maybe he can step up into year number two. I think they need a good receiver. They just need a really good receiver. And to me, that's Jackson Smith and Jigba. So that's the way I'm going. Uh, let's hold on. Uh, unpause the draft real quick as the draft was paused. So they went out and they got uh, some help on the offense line of Paris Johnson and then also Jackson Smith and Jigba. 
Yes, it was quite a bit to give up, but at the end of the day, they need offensive firepower. They need more help, no doubt about it. Yeah, they need some defensive help, but Bill, Bill Belichick always seems to work his magic there. On to the Jacksonville Jaguars here. Pick number 25 overall. What do the Jaguars do? I think offensive line gets interesting here, and that's actually where I'm going to go. I'm going to take Dewan Jones. Let's freaking go. Dewan Jones rising up. I think he could go higher than this, but he's going to plug right in there for Jawan Taylor. Maybe they don't re-sign him because you pay two tackles, big-time money. It's a little expensive, you know, and I think that Dewan Jones could be an absolute monster of addition for them, pun intended, and you put him right in day one as a day one starter at right tackle, help out that offense line, and he'll help them out too in the run blocking game, which was one of the worst, they may have been the worst graded run blocking unit in the NFL. On to the Giants, that'll bring some mentality to their offensive line, I'll tell you that right now, he was throwing people out there uh, in the senior ball. On to the Giants at number 26 overall, they need receiver help in desperate ways, Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnston, both really good. Depends on what you want, right? Do you want that upside in Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison, both really, really good options. I'm going to go ahead and take the upshot swing in Quentin Johnson. I love the value at this point. Johnson, to me, is a, is a top 25 player. I just like him more in this 20 to 25 range. I, you know, past 15, I, I get okay with it. Even if you're Houston, if you draft a quarterback at the top, if you want to get yourself a playmaker, I guess I'd be okay with it too, just to get your guy. But to me, the value later in the draft, there are some questions with Quentin Johnson. I need to see that with his game develop and overall, but he does have the upside to be a number one guy. We go on to the my uh, uh, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. I'm like, oh, I know this team. I've seen them. Jerry Jones. Hey, hold on a minute. I'm Jerry Jones. Going to pull some tricks out. Hey, they need a number two receiver. Okay, I know you got Michael Gallup. Him getting healthy into year number two. But Jordan Addison. Going to be that guy to be the opposite pairing with uh, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. He can play in the slot, too, if you want, because Michael Gallup's more of an outside receiver. C.D. Lamb could play in the slot and on the outside, so you can kind of interchange these guys. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I do think corner is where they end up going in the draft, but I'm going to go Jordan Addison here as a number two receiver and <laughs> just shaking things up. Uh, on to the Bengals here, number 28 overall. I think they need offensive tackle help or really, really bad, and I'm going to go with Darnell Wright out of Tennessee, Looked very, very good for the most part. I know he had some loses against, losses against Will McDonald, but Will McDonald, he might go here in just a little bit, actually. But Darno Wright, right tackle, plug him in right away for Lel Collins, who's injured. Probably take him a little bit of time. And even going forward, Darnell Wright can play left tackle. You can work things out. I mean, you need offensive tackle help, offensive line help in general. Saints now. First time we've been picking in the first round for the New Orleans Saints. And at pick number 29 overall, to me, their biggest needs are either, you know, maybe our left guard position, Andres Peep. You got quarterback, of course. I'm not taking a quarterback at this point. I'm just not. Not reaching for a quarterback. I think top four guys are off the board. I'm going to wait till later on. Other areas that I think interior defense line is a huge need. Maybe edge is a huge need, too, depending on Marcus Davenport. If you re-sign him, you also have Cameron Jordan, who's getting a little bit older. Peyton Turner. Lucas Van Nesh uh, and also Zach Harrison fit the bill quite a bit in the type of dudes that they love. They're also going to probably love Keon White, but I think they need an interior guy, right? They really need interior presence, someone who can stop the run. You know, they got so many free agents there um, that they've got to, you know, with Shai Chuddle and then also David Ajamada, both free agents. So I think we have to go on to the interior offense or the interior defensive line. And I'm going to go ahead and take. Uh, it, it is tough, okay? I will say, there's some guys. I am a huge Keanu Benton guy. I mean, is it first round? Do I take Benton first round? I'm not going to lie. I love Benton. Like, he is one of my dudes, man. And I, I've been wanting to put him in a first round mock draft for a long time. I, I can't. He, he, to me, he's top of the second round. But this it does get interesting. Seek Ika, more of a day two guy, in my opinion. I'm going to go... Ooh, I want to take Benton so, so bad. You know what? We are going to take Keanu Benton because, hey, we got to, man. Keanu Benton is a guy who he's got way more athleticism than people talk about. And you're starting to see that with these one-on-ones. This dude can really swim by people. He's got some power in his game. I mean, you, you, you know, you played at nose tackle at Wisconsin. But I was saying, like, this dude could be a legit three-tech, too. Like, he is not just a nose tackle. He is a dude that is super strong, and he is quick off the line. 
And if he continues to work on his pass rush, which he obviously has been doing, and you see it on the, the one-on-ones, this dude can be a complete defensive tackle. He has the profile. He has the size, the length, the strength, speed, everything that you look for from a top interior defense lineman. So I am going Keanu Benton here at 29. A little early. I, I'm just highlighting him because I'm a big, huge fan of Keanu Benton. I really love Benton a ton. On to Buffalo here at number 30 overall. And I am going offensive line. I'm going John Michael Schmitz. Top center off the board. They need center in all desperate, or they need offensive interior, okay? And this is the way I see it. Maybe Mitch Morris comes back. I think John Michael Schmitz could even plug in at guard early on, but at the end of the day, they need interior help in desperate ways. Mitch Morris could be a cap casualty as well. And in this case scenario, you probably are going to do that. They need to sign somebody as well in free agency. You can even make the argument that they could go after a right tackle because Spencer Brown really struggled throughout the season. They just need offensive line help. And I think uh, John Michael Smith's the best player available at this point on the offensive line. Uh, I mean, you could have looked at, I mean, uh, um, uh, Matthew Bergeron or Jalen Duncan if you wanted to go tackle. I think those are all decent options as well. Chiefs, they need offense to tackle up. Maybe a little bit of a slim picking. So maybe we look at the second round at this point. I'm going to go after the edge position because I do think they need an edge rusher to compliment Frank Clark probably on the way out at some point here. I mean, I know we've been saying that, but I do think he is on the way out. And I'm going to go ahead and take Lucas Van Nesh, who is another guy who, uh, yeah, he's got tons of power, and he's also got some nice speed off the edge. It'll be a nice little one-two punch with George Galuptis. And then we go on to the Philadelphia Eagles here to round out the first round. And with this pick at the end of the first round, I am actually going to take another edge rusher here, back to back. I'm going to change it up. I do think safety is something that they could really look at, but I am going to take Zach Harrison, one of my guys after watching his film. He is a disruptor, man, and I know that he doesn't have the the bend maybe you look for, but he's going to be that strong side guy for the Philadelphia Eagles to be a nice pair along with Josh Sweat and also Hassan Reddick. I think he fits the skill set, and you can even work him on the inside on pass rushing downs. This dude is so strong in his upper body, and he is so, his explosive burst, like he is a bouncing running back eraser, if you know what I mean. Like if a running back's trying to bounce to the outside, not many running backs, maybe Devin A. Chain, but there's not many guys that Zach Harrison can't catch up to. He has crazy closing burst. He, he, he has got extreme explosiveness for his size. Now, sometimes it's not always there from a snap-to-snap basis, but the dude is an athletic freak, and he's super powerful. He's even worked some nice inside counter moves that I'd like to see from him in this next year. Just a disruptor. And then we go on to the Pittsburgh Steelers at pick number 33. And at this point, for the Steelers, we went after an offensive lineman in Antoine Harrison. I think you go after a corner here, and there's some good corners still available in Cam Smith. And there's some really good corners. I mean, you've got, I can't believe the amount of corners that are still available. We're going to see a run on corners here in just a minute. But Cam Smith is going to be the first one off the board, top of the second round for the Pittsburgh Steelers, get themselves a some help and some youth in that secondary with Antoine Harrison now. Those are your first two draft picks. Then we go on to the Chicago Bears. In round number one, we went after Jalen Carter, obviously that trade down. So this is, now you now have three second round picks, I believe, at our disposal. So this is going to be fun, right? It's going to be fun, at least hopefully, right? I mean, Bears fans like, don't screw it up, G-Sling. Uh, we can actually look at another corner. Hey, I wouldn't be opposed to drafting another corner. They do need another outside guy, and there's some great corners on the board here. I may go that route. Tyreek Stevenson would be a great option for this team. Uh, you got Deontay Banks, who's easily in this conversation as well. Like, he's really freaking good, too. Um, other areas, especially with maybe the offensive lineman kind of coming off the board now, I'm super high on Matthew Bergeron. I really am a fan of Bergeron. I think he's a very, very talented dude and someone that could come in here and help them out a ton. But I am going to go after some help for Justin Fields, and it's going to be Jameer Gibbs. They need some help at the running back position, and I think Jameer Gibbs would be, you know, actually, hold on a second. It is tough. Okay, so there's Devin A. Chain, to me... I'm not going to lie. Devin A. Chain could go first round. His speed is just different. It's it's a different level gear. But I'm going to go Jameer Gibbs as a nice receiving one-two punch and get Justin Fields, like I said, some help in the receiving game because we really need it. We went Jalen Carter, and I still think there's good corners available we can get with one of those other second-round picks. And, you know, defensive help, defensive line, which, you know, could use get another edge rusher. On to the Arizona Cardinals here. Pick number 25, and for the Arizona Cardinals, we went after defensive line of Will Anderson here at pick number three. 
They need offensive line at this point. It's a desperation sort of mold. They need interior help. And what I'm going to do at this point is I, oh, it, it does get interesting. I think I'm going to Cody Mock. It is a little early for Mock in my opinion. He's a good player. I like Cody Mock a ton. But it is a little early to take Cody Mock. At the end of the day, though, they do need some offensive line help in all kinds of ways. So I am going to take Cody Mock here. And he'd probably go off the board very soon afterwards anyway. Indianapolis Colts, ooh, Indianapolis Colts could have taken Cody Mock. They need a right, ta a right guard desperately. Uh, don't know if I'm going to take anybody at this moment at that position. So in terms of uh, the Colts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the defensive line here, add another edge rusher because you do have to look at um, Yannick Ngakwe, who is a free agent, and maybe trying to find a mold of someone who can fit that Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, there's some dudes out here, but I'm going to go Isaiah Foskey. I think he's a top of the second round guy and a really, really good talent coming there. Oh, actually, you know what? No, we're going to take uh, Will McDonald. I think Will McDonald. Where? Oh, here he is. I was going to say, I'm like, where's Will McDonald? 157. That's crazy, dude. Uh, but yeah, Will McDonald is going to be the pick here for the Indianapolis Colts at this pick number 36. He is unbelievably twitched up, a crazy athlete, super length. The dude can be that perfect, um, not Hassan Reddick, uh, but that'd be a tough one, but uh, yeah, perfect Yannick Ngakwe replacement for the Indianapolis Colts. On to the Los Angeles Rams. They need edge rushing talent. They need offensive line help too. I mean, I could see them going after some more help. Uh, at center, they need a center desperately. Maybe the third round is where you look at that. I'm going to go after an edge rush here, Isaiah Foskey. I know it's probably, you know, the, the pick that gets over and over again, but to me, it's a huge area of need. Let's go ahead and take him. Seattle at number 38 overall. They need offensive line help. They need interior help, maybe a center. Who do we go after in the first round? Let's double check. So we went Tyree Wilson, and then we also went Kelly Ringo. At this point, we could look at going after a linebacker, which is a desperate need. And I'm going to take Trenton Simpson, who's still on the board, and I don't know why, but yeah. He fell, and that's an easy slam dunk pick. And whew, that might be the steal of the draft. <laughs> I didn't even realize that, but Trenton Simpson, wow. Uh, yeah, he's... Unbelievable. I mean, I don't even have to sell that, man. I mean, <laughs> Trenton Simpson at pick number 38. Oh, my goodness. On to the Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. We went after a uh, corner, right? Or who did we go? A quarterback. Pardon me. We went quarterback. Now we need to go corner. Uh, get some more secondary help. They desperately need it. And I am going to go, ooh, it's a tough one, Deontay Banks, Tyreek Stevenson. Both guys I like a ton, man. There's some real DJ Turners in this range. I am going to take Julius Brents. Julius Brents more of a maybe a late day two, early day three guy in my opinion, or uh, round three, should I say. I am going to take Deontay Banks here, but it is a, it is a close one between him and Tyreek Stevenson. So we're going to take Banks, uh, get some outside corner help for the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, let's go on here to the Carolina Panthers at pick number 40 overall, which they went after a quarterback. They did trade up, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we could even look at a trade back at this point too, maybe to get a little extra draft capital for the next year. So we did give away our first round pick, but it's all good, man. We got two second rounders. We're going to be add some talent for our quarterback in CJ Stroud. And I'm going to start out by doing that, by adding in a receiver, I think here. And the type of receiver who I want to add in, I think they need a little bit more, you know, a little more juice, a little bit more dynamicism. And to me, that person would be Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers will be a perfect complement to what they have. You can line him up on the outside too. I think his release is good enough where he can be an outside receiver. So we need to get some more help on the perimeter. And for CJ Stroud, get a separator. Zay Flowers, he's a separator. I know Tank Dell could be in a conversation. We'll talk about Tank Dell here, I'm sure, soon. But I think getting Zay Flowers would be a nice addition to their offense. And then we go on to the uh, New Orleans Saints at pick number 41 overall. We went after interior defensive line Keanu Benton. And maybe you could say, well, you should go after Benton more at this pick. And that would make a lot of sense. But hey, I think Benton is such a beast. Uh, in terms of what do I think that they need to do at this point is... I would say you're looking at maybe a left guard. Now, a lot of the offensive linemen are kind of off the board at this point in terms of guards. I, You know, the guard class is a little thin, but I mean, you could always convert. Matthew Bergeron could play guard. I could see him actually playing guard, you know, early on or even Jalen Duncan at playing a guard. But I think what we're going to do instead is we are going to be looking at, uh, you know, adding some more help here at the running back position. And I'm going to go Devin A-Chain. One of my guys as well. I am a huge fan of Devin A. Chain. He is unbelievable. His speed is 
crazy. I mean, you talk about a guy that I think is going to be a Chris Johnson sort of impact player, at least for a short portion of his career. He is just an absolute monster. I, like I said, I think he's going to, he might go in the first round. The more I watch Devin A. Chain, the more I like him. Just unbelievable speed. On to the Tennessee Titans at number 42 overall here. We went offensive line. We went after Broderick Jones, as I was saying. He's my number one tackle. I think he's got crazy, crazy upside. Now we need to add a receiver into this offense, right? You could look at edge position too, and there's some great edge rushers still available, but I do think receiver is a big, big need for them. And the terms of which type of receiver I'm going to go after, this is where we're going to go ahead. And uh, even uh, Josh Downs is really good. And you know what? Let's... Let, Ooh, Tank Dell is interesting. Jalen Hyatt is really good too. Uh, all really good options. I'm going to go ahead and stick here with Josh Downs. As much as I do like Tank Dell, I think it's still a little early. We'll look at Tank Dell here soon, right? Jaden Reed is an option. We'll talk about him some more here too. But I'm going to go Josh Downs for the Tennessee Titans to get some more receiver help. On to the Cleveland Browns, who desperately need interior defense lineup. They need receiver help too. But I think they need a Sika Ika, a Mozzie Smith. I'm going to go Mozzie Smith or Gervin Dexter is available too. Really good options, man. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go Gervin Dexter here out of Florida. It's close. It's a close race between him and Mozzie Smith. But Gervin Dexter is going to be able to plug up the interior. Good. He's got that potential to be a really, really good run defender. And if he can put those tools together and be a really good pass rusher as well, just got to figure out how to get off blockers a little bit better. Utilize his leverage but and his length. But he's got the ability. On to the Jets here at 41 or 44, which... I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it. It's done. It's done. It's already in my mind. Aaron Rodgers, that's why I'm getting this pick mentally out of my mind because I think it might be gone in general. I'm going to make this happen in terms of what it's going to cost the Jets is, I'll just throw in a seventh rounder to make it, you know, so it is what it is there. Uh, uh, here's what it's going to cost. It's going to be a first rounder next year and a second rounder this year. And again, I'm just throwing in a seventh round pick, whatever. But for Aaron Rodgers, this is the deal to get it done. Just now bringing Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay Packers now have this pick here, pick number 44 overall, which early on they went after a uh, offense or a safety, right? At this point, I think you go tight end. Michael Mayer is still available. I don't know how he's still available. Another steal in the draft. He goes to pick number 44. It's not going to happen. I don't even know how the heck he is still available at this point. But yeah, that's just an unbelievable value for Michael May. 44 overall. Like I said, that will not happen. Pardon me, everybody. But sometimes you have a little bit of an oversight. Green Bay looks into a great pick, just like Trent Simpson. Probably not happening. So I'll just kind of state that out there right now. On to the Atlanta Falcons, though. We go at pick number 45. And we're getting into this draft now. Uh, let's see what we want to do here to me, I think they need a receiver. They need some more help on the perimeter. I'm looking to add some explosiveness, some like down the field speed. And to me, uh, Jalen Hyatt would be really interesting of an option. Uh, but uh, you know what we're going to do. I, uh, I think you guys know what we're going to do. I think we're going to go after Tank Dell. Nathaniel Tank Dell, wherever the heck he is. He's probably down here somewhere, right? Where the heck do they have Tank Dell? Huh? Oh, here he is. Nathaniel Tank Dell. He's going off the board. He's going to be someone who's going to add some serious deep speed for them. And get yourself that dude that can be a separator alongside Drake London. Like, that's a fun combination. Tank Dell and Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Oh, my gosh. That just takes some blood. <laughs> but, yeah, now you've got yourself a dynamic receiving room slash tight end room going to be able to bring some pain along with the run game, right? So that's the way I see it, adding in a tank down there at pick 45. So this is an interesting one here for Green Bay. I did some good deliberation on this one. And I think at the end of the day for the Packers, you need more firepower. And we got Brian Branch. I could see them going after some more defensive line help, no doubt about it, some edge rushers. But at this point, maybe some of those edge rushers are picked up off the board. I think what we're going to do here is go back to the offense. I could see them going after a running back because you know what? That's probably what they're going to be doing. But I'm going to go Jalen Hyatt. It's a tough conversation. I'm actually a little higher on Marvin Mims, but Jalen Hyatt's really good. Raji Rice, unfortunately, going to be falling down the board quite a bit after the senior, or at least so far during the senior bowl. He still has been, he's not been terrible, but just hasn't been super impressive. You worry, you know, a little bit about his game. Uh, what how it's going to translate to the next level but I'm going to go ahead and take Jalen Hyde who could be a nice little slot deep threat for them 
and add some more comp as a more crazy speed into that offense which is something they love so we're going to go that route and michael mayer that should be a good enough receiving room for them and then we go on to the minnesota vikings here pick number 47 and this one to me after the trade down this makes perfect sense to go after some probably some defensive line interior because there's a good chance that Dalvin Tomlinson doesn't come back. So maybe finding some more help with Harrison Phillips would be really, really good. And a guy to me is Mozzie Smith. He's sticking right out there. Put him on that defensive line. I think he'd be a really, really nice interior player for them. Uh, the Commanders, at number 48 overall, they went after some offensive line help in Osiris Torrance. And at this point, I think you're looking at either you know linebacker depth, you got corner potentially, just depending on you know Danny Johnson if he's back and how you feel about Benjamin St. Juice and kind of where you want to play guys. Kendall Fuller is getting a little bit older, so you could look at cornerback. And there's some really good corners available. Tight end is something though. I think I'm going to go after a good tight end. And to me, Darnell Washington is someone as a mismatch nightmare is unfreaking believable. Luke Musgrave is is good too. There's some going to be some injury things. Dalton Kincaid, I've heard there's some injury rumors going on there, but Kincaid's unbelievable too. I mean, there's just really good tight ends and they're probably going to go off the board way earlier than this as well. And speaking of which, we could go tight end here for the, for the Detroit Lions too. I could see that them going after a, a tight end at this point. And there's like I said, there's a lot of really good ones. So, and you know what? I'm going to take a tight end here. I'm going to take Dalton Kincaid who add another receiving element in there with James Mitchell. Now you got yourself a one-two punch. And uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to... I mean, Dolan Kincaid, Luke Musgrave, which one do we want to go? Do we want to add more vertical speed? Or do we want to add in someone in... Let me just take a look at the linebacker room real quick. Drew Sanders is available. I will say Drew Sanders might be a better pick. But I could also see that I think they're going to go after one offensive player. You know what I mean? Because it's like, uh, you know, I get it. You got a lot of different options. But I do think they're going to go after somebody on the offense side of the ball within their first four picks. So I'm going to go ahead and grab... We'll, we'll go after, I'm a little higher on Dalton Kincaid personally, so I'm going to go after Dalton Kincaid. I think he brings that route running prowess and more receiving threat in there along with James Mitchell as a one-two punch. And then we go on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who we've gotten a lot of help hopefully for this team. We went after Cam Smith with their first pick and Antoine Harrison with their, or sorry, Cam Antoine Harrison with their first pick and then Cam Smith with their second pick. At this point, I'm going to go linebacker, I think, because they need some more help at the linebacker position, right? I mean, you got to figure on that Devin White, or sorry, Devin Bush may not be back. And even as such, they probably need some more help because there's a good chance that they end up maybe cutting, um, what's his name, from Jacksonville at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and take Drew Sanders here, get some more help at that linebacker position. Then we go on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. Pick number 51, we went after an edge rusher. We went after B.J. Ojalari. And they could use linebacker too. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, they really do need linebacker. And Dale Hanley's been looking real good. But I'm going to go Captain Jack. Hey, we can't forget about Captain Jack. Been really, really good. And uh, help them out. Give you a nice one-two punch. He'll be the Mike linebacker for them with uh, Devin uh, White, who can be that blitzing dude. And then we got the Miami Dolphins at pick number 52. Yeah, I love A-Chain for them. It's a dream scenario. But obviously, in this case, it doesn't work out. That's okay. I'm going to go Matthew Bergeron, huge Bergeron fan. I know it's, it can be a little challenging, you know, sliding guys over to right tackle, left tackle, but Bergeron to me, great footwork. This guy is just a matter of putting on more strength at the next level. His punch is really nice. He's going to be a beast, man. He's like my Bernard Ryman in this draft class. I'm a big fan of him and you know whatnot and then we go on to seattle pick number 53 where i'm going to go after a center prospect because i do think we need to look at the interior we've gone after a lot of defensive help too for them which we added in trent simpson and we added in double defense i believe with tyree wilson and then also we added in a kelly ringo so we've added a lot of defense help i think we need to add some offensive trench help now and i'm going to go after a center and in terms of which center it's tough. I need to see Luke Wimpler kind of measure in with his size. The only thing I worry about with Wimpler is his, uh, you know, some of the length concerns. Tittman's really good to a lot of potential there. I'm really high on uh, Ricky Stromberg, really, really high on Stromberg as well. But I, I don't know. We'll see about Stromberg, uh, where he ends up going. But it's tough. Like I said, Tittman's really good. I think we'll go ahead and take Joe Tittman out of Wisconsin. A lot of upside with Tittman, I'll say that. Let's go on to Chicago Bears, who also need a center. And you know what? I think that's where we're going to stay. We went after Jameer Gibbs here. 
Could look at a receiver, but I think Jameer Gibbs will at least add some help in that receiving room in that sort of capacity. So I'm going to add some interior offense lineup. We need someone to replace Steve Mustafer. And this is actually where I, I am going to go after Ricky Stromberg. I'm just a little higher. I feel, But Luke Whipler, man, I'm telling you, Whipler, I just want to see some of those measurables check out. And I could see him going. He's right in the mix. I will say he's right in the mix. But I do like Ricky Stromberg a ton, man. I'm a huge Stromberg fan. He's like, you know, right there. He's my number two center behind John Michael Schmitz. And then you have uh, Tittman and Whipler competing out for 3-4. I think this center class is better than people are giving it credit for. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the Las, uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles Chargers here at pick number 55, where we added in some help on the offense. And we went after B. John Robinson. And the second round pick, I think the interior defensive lineup. And I'm going to go Siaka Ika who, remember, they rely on these front guys to stop the run, and he's a perfect combination to add into that defensive line. Desperately, you know, they tried their best with Austin Jackson and Sebastian Joseph Day. I think that Siaka Ika would be that guy on that interior to really help them get that over the level and stop the run, man. They were just, they've been bad stopping the run this season and past couple of seasons, so that should help. On to the Detroit Lions back here on the clock, pick number 56 overall. And we went after a tight end, which might be a little controversial. Again, James Mitchell, we'll see how he ends up doing development-wise. But I think Kincaid is just a different type of talent. So that's why I went after him. Uh, I still love going after maybe some more interior offense line help. But guard-wise, Steve Avila been super impressive. And he's got so much versatility. I Linebacker is interesting, though. Daylon Henley, Noah Sewell. Maybe you can get one of those guys in the third round. So I know they need linebacker help. It's definitely a need, but I think Steve Avila could be a guy after what he's shown at the senior bowl, plug and play, put him into the right guard position, continue to work on that offensive line, make it one of the best in the league. And that is, I think, what we're going to do here. Let me just take a look real quick at the board, make sure I'm not missing anybody. Oh, Clark Phillips is still available. How is Clark Phillips still on the board? Let me think, how could that work? I mean, we could always add in Clark Phillips, put him in the slot or something like that. Uh, Christopher Smith is on the board. Antonio Johnson still on the board. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. You know what? Antonio Johnson, Christopher Smith, we might just have to take them as the best available players. Like Antonio Johnson, is his skill set a little redundant with what they have? Could they play him in the slot? I don't know if he's got the overall agility to play in the slot at the next level. I see him more as a strong side safety, which you've got Kirby Joseph, you have Tracy Walker. So, yeah, that's kind of the only thing I'll say there. Why I wouldn't necessarily do that. If you want to get a slot, go get Clark Phillips. Um, let me pause this draft. This is actually a really tough one for the Detroit Lions. And a lot of really good options. And Clark Phillips is still on the board, which, like I said, is kind of crazy. So, yeah, after all that thinking, we're going to stick with our original gut pick, Steve Avila here, to kind of rock out the rest of this draft here for the Detroit Lions. Uh, for this, you know, for this mock at least and go with Steve Avila. I just think plugging him into that right guard position, plus he's got versatility at the center position too. I mean, he's looked good there as well. And Frank Ragnow has had an injury history. So I think Steve Avila would be a nice addition into that offensive line. And again, make it a strength, man. When you have one of the best offensive lines, you see like the Philadelphia Eagles, the Kansas City Chiefs, like it takes you places. Those two teams have arguably the one and two best offensive lines in football. And that's why I always say, when in doubt, trench it out. And I know that Clark Phillips, is, it's crazy that he's still available and he might go here to the Jaguars, but onto the Jaguars here. And this is this has gotta be where the, the, the fall stops here for, the, for Clark Phillips, like unbelievable player. Could even be in the first round conversation. Clark Phillips in a second. Yeah, the size concerns are going to be a little interesting out there, but plug him into the slot. Dorius Williams has been playing well on the outside. You have Tyson Campbell on the outside. That's a good corner room. Definitely adding some more help there. I can see him going interior defensive line too. Maybe, you know, because Roy Robertson Harris is a possible cap casualty. You know, Etomiwa, uh, 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 Etomiwa uh, well, how do you pronounce his name? Hold on, let me see. Let me look, look at his name. Etomiwa Edebarwe. This dude has been rocking out in the senior bowl. I could see him being a really, really good pick, too, for the Jaguars at that second round pick. Watch out for that one. He'd be a nice little Roy Robertson Harrison uh, replacement. Giants at pick 58. They need corner. I think adding another corner on the outside would be really, really nice. I mean, they need linebacker help, too, really bad. And there's some good linebackers available. They need uh, we we need interior offensive line help too. They need a center. Maybe Luke Whipler would be the option. They've got a lot of needs. What are we going for in the first round for them? We went after a receiver and Quentin Johnson. 
We need interior offensive line help, man. I, I think we're going to go after Luke Whipler here. Go ahead and take him. I know they need corner, but yeah, let's go offensive line. Let's go. Even though corners, man, there's so many good corners available right now. And finding a guy on the outside. You got DJ Turner. You got, uh, you got Julius Brands, Tyreek Stevenson. Uh, so many guys available at this point. It's just wild. But anyway, yeah, we're going to go and take Luke Whipler here. Because I think this, you know, the... the uh, the drop-off after Luke Whipler might get a little bit crazy. So go get yourself a center. They desperately need it. And then we go on to the Cowboys at pick number 59. And this is where we take a corner. No question about it. We went after a receiver in the first round. We got Jordan Addison as that number two weapon. Or Michael Gallup, you know, whatever. You know, number two, number three. At this point, we take a, a corner. It's pretty obvious to me now. I always say there's so many good corners. Emmanuel Forbes is on the board. Uh, you got Tyreek Stevenson. But we're going to go with Tyreek Stevenson out of the U. He has been unbelievable at the Senior Bowl. He has just looked the part, man. Those man coverage skills, stays in phase. Maybe the long speed isn't crazy, but I think he's going to be a nice outside corner for them to pair along with Trevon Diggs and Deron Bland in the slot. Bengals here at pick number 60. We went after offensive line in the first round. Linebacker could be a question depending on free agency and all those things and whatnot. But I am going to go after a tight end here, finding a good tight end in Luke Musgrave. Vertical speed, adding another playmaker in that offense. I think Luke Musgrave would be an ideal uh, addition for the Bengals. Get Joe Burrow some more help there. Why not? And then Carolina here at number 61 overall. Uh, this point, we are going to be looking at uh, an edge rusher because we went after a receiver, right? We went after Zay Flowers. We got a quarterback in uh, CJ Stroud. Now I think you need to add an edge rusher into this defense or onto this defensive line, right? A number two guy. And in terms of the type of dude that I'm looking for here, Felix and DK Uzama is still a really good player, man. We can't forget about him. Other guys, anybody else I want to mention out here, they probably are looking for more of like a, a, a power side guy. Keanu White hasn't been super impressive in my opinion, just watching him. I don't know. I'm not quite there. Kalaja Kansi, I do like Kalaja Kansi. You know, we, we could take Kalaja Kansi because he could also work on the in on the inside too. You know what? We're going to go Kalaja Kansi. I'm a huge fan of Kalaja Kansi. And you have Matt Ioannidis, who's a free agent. Kansi's a stud. I'm willing to bet on his outlying traits. Let's go on to the Buffalo Bills here. We went offensive line. John Michael Schmitz. Hey, I could double dip and we could take another offensive lineman. But I think we're going to go after some help in the safety room. And there's just too many good safeties available. I mean, Chris Smith is available. Antonio Johnson. I'm a little higher on Christopher Smith. And I think that's the way we're going to go here. Go at another safety for the Buffalo Bills. And you could rock out there. And then on to the Kansas City Chiefs here. Pick number 63. Uh, I think we got to go ahead and take a look at, we went uh, offense or a defensive line, right? We went edge rusher, Lucas Van Ness. I think now we go offensive line. And I think this is where we will take Jalen Duncan. I think he's a good draft and developmental project and let him come in here and hopefully learn, maybe be the eventual right tackle or even left tackle. I don't know. We'll figure it out if, uh, if uh, um, Orlando Brown ends up getting paid. But on to our final pick here for the Philadelphia Eagles in this second round. What do we want to do? Jaden Reed is, you know, interesting. Add another weapon. Maybe as a slot weapon. <laughs> Would be a fun one. We got we to gotta get a senior bowl guy in here, right? But, hey, they need safety still. And I think Antonio Johnson would be a nice one. Jordan Battle. But we're going to rock it out with Antonio Johnson. And uh, we'll, we'll save it, I guess. I don't know. Whatever we want to do. Let's, let's see. Uh, does it have a recap? Oh, here we go. View results. Let's view the results, how we did. Selecting, I'll go through it here real quick and just kind of take a look at it. But let me know your favorite or your least favorite picks. I know there was some interesting ones here, trying to highlight some senior bowl guys and kind of go over some things and how things are rolling and everything like that. There's some guys like John Michael Schmitz who are making a lot of money and and uh, Dewan Jones who's easily in that first round conversation. I'd be shocked actually if he doesn't go in the first round after that. And uh, let's see what, like I said, Jaden Reed, you got Tank Dell making a lot of money. Uh, and Abare is making a good amount of money out there. Keanu Benton. I don't know if Benton goes in the first round, but I could easily see him going at the top of the second. Like the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, the, the New Orleans Saints. Like somebody's going to take him at that top of the second round. It's just, it's just got too much power, too much speed profile not to take. And yeah, I'm a little higher on Ricky Stromberg. He's probably not going this early. 
Corners are probably going to go earlier than that. And maybe you say to yourself, hey, this is maybe a corner spot, like a DJ Turner or a Tyreek Stevenson, and then Ricky Stromberg ends up going to the Bears in the third round. We'll have to continue to work with the uh, realistic ability with it. But I, I like the center class, man. I like the corner class. It's it's shaping up to be a very, very fun class overall in general. But there it is. First mock draft on the Draft Network. So you have to let me know what you think of the Draft Network. I thought it was an interesting one. There's some things they can work on, but I think it's a good simulator. And we'll have to continue to use it a little bit more. But hope everyone has a really good day. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. I hope you guys do too. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.